pretty much everyone, except for a few Gen Zers who are ahead of the curve, has a smartphone in their pocket by now. But that means there are more opportunities for companies to monitor, collect, and sell your information. Yeah, CBS News' is Scott McFarland has a look at how TikTok is capturing not only your data, but also your friends' data as well. But critics say TikTok might know too much. So we're scrolling through here. Tracking its users' likes, dislikes, and more. Your email address, there's your phone number, the Wi-Fi network you're connected with. We asked Gizmodo reporter Thomas Germain to show us how TikTok sweeps up data. And right there, it's uploading. And we saw those servers light up there as the data was going out for my phone. There they all are. Right. They now have access to all of your contacts. They're looking through all of my contacts to see whether those people are on TikTok, but who knows what they're doing with it. They're definitely keeping track of everything that's in there, whether those people are on TikTok or not. And the interesting thing there is my friends didn't consent to having their phone numbers and emails uploaded in TikTok. Meantime, Epic Games, the maker of the popular video game Fortnite, has agreed to pay $275 million in civil penalties to settle claims accusing the company of collecting children's information without their parents' consent. Wow. With us now is Alexandra Seymour. She is an associate fellow for the Technology and National Security Program at the Center for a New American Security. Alexandra, you know, we were talking about how much these social media companies have been able to yeah. glean about every aspect of our lives. And we heard TikTok's collecting your data, your friends' data. Your Wi-Fi network you know, all, With all of this, you wouldn't fault people for just feeling like it's time to throw our hands up in the air and say our information can't be kept totally secure. What do you say? Yeah, I certainly there are ways. First of all, thank you so much for having me. So I think that one thing we have to recognize is that there really is uh, no privacy anymore, just in the sense that there is so much data that is being collected on us at every moment. But what we do need to know is the things that we can do to make sure that we are protecting ourselves. So whether it's location data, whether it's uh, phone numbers, it's emails, a lot of this is within the apps themselves where they will ask for your consent to say, can we collect this information? Uh, and it's up to users uh, to make sure that they understand how to turn some of these settings off. Now, at the same time, what we also need to recognize is that this is really incumbent on some of the companies to make sure that they're being transparent in the way that they collect data, how they store it, how they use it, uh, and to make sure that, that they are uh, being transparent with users so that they don't have any questions about the way that their data is being collected. Because it is a scary thing uh, to recognize that these companies are able to pull together all of this information and essentially build a profile on, on you. Uh, and even if the data is anonymous, can taken together can build out your preferences, your associations, yeah. Uh, and other likes of the matter. I can't tell you how many things I own that I did not need before Instagram offered me. And <laughs> suddenly- There's also that hazard, right? Suddenly it belongs to me. You know, one thing is those switches that you can toggle on and off that you were mentioning to protect your privacy, but what legal protections actually exist to prevent companies from misusing customer data? Yeah, so actually this is very different on a state by state basis. The first thing is that we don't right now have a comprehensive data privacy law at the federal level. Uh, so that means that really a lot of states have taken this on themselves to start putting those protections into place. California is probably the most notable example in terms of somewhere uh, where there's more robust protections, but otherwise this really is both up to the state uh, to, to implement some of those legal protections. And then it also is on the companies as well to make sure that they are uh, implementing practices that are protecting users and making sure that they're being transparent with users in terms of how their data is being collected and exactly where it's going from there. So there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. There is this federal data privacy law that has been discussed within Congress. Uh, it is likely not to pass, though it is probably in the most bipartisan shape that it has been mm -hmm. in terms of when it has come up beforehand, uh, but it is something that we will likely see continue to be discussed uh, for the next couple of Congresses. Well, you know, it's interesting as you're talking about Congress, because in 2019, the New York Times did a study. They found that they could track the president. At that point, it was uh, President Trump by monitoring data from a Secret Service agent's phone. 
How mm -hmm. could a foreign adversary like Russia or China use that information? Um, and, and what hope do we have, again, of protecting our own security when even the president of the United States could be tracked? I think the most important thing to note is that when you're talking about global strategic competition, it is a competition for information advantage. So this is a very valuable thing that adversaries are going to want to get a hold of. And they can use it in a number of ways. They can use it to track individuals, as you mentioned, whether that's the individual themselves in terms of putting the different types of data together, or if it is by association as well. Uh, it might not be the senior level person whose phone is being tracked in that moment, but if they have someone who closely uh, is with them at, at most times of the day, there's a way to put two and two together in that sense. Um, there's also cybersecurity concerns that stem from that as well in terms of when you have this types of information, being able to create more tailored phishing attacks against individuals because you're able to track their patterns and their habits uh, to make them seem more realistic. There's also concerns about uh, targeting critical infrastructure as well, depending mm -hmm. on uh, individuals who might be working in sensitive areas. This was the case with uh, Strava, the fitness app, where they had put out a heat map a couple of years ago, and it had exposed uh, some more military right. sites inadvertently. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the concerns about just powering technological development as well. Um, for something like artificial intelligence, which runs on data uh, and becomes more accurate with the more data that you have, taking this type of information can be very powerful in terms of accelerating that technological development. Yeah, a lot of concerns. All right, Alexandra Seymour, thank you. Thank you so much.